video I'm making of the two hearings that I was summoned to appear at, and this is for the second hearing that was held on August 19th, 2016, and I, it's State of Oregon versus Jean before Marion County Judge Channing Bennett, and over at the Circuit Court downtown Salem, Oregon. I'm going to go ahead and play the recording at this time. Your Honor, we're here on State versus She's Present Out of Custody Without Counsel. All right. Uh... You were at the agency, you've just now been assigned to me, and that you had waived court appointed counsel and that you didn't want counsel. And so um, <clears throat> I wanted to go over that with you this morning, and then we're, we're just here for a status to decide how we're going to proceed on the case. Uh -huh. And so um, you have a right to have counsel. Uh, you, you don't, you're not required to have counsel. You can represent yourself if you choose to do, but are you aware that? You're charged with three C felonies, is that, am I saying that right, because I'm not on the... I don't have paperwork on felonies, I have three um, misdemeanors. Yes, um, Your Honor, I have um, three counts of custodial interference in the second degree as misdemeanors. As a misdemeanors. Mm -hmm. so, yes, sir. And I objected to those charges in the previous hearing. Well, I understand you object to them, but, you know, you can file, I guess, a motion if you don't think they're appropriate, um, but if the DA brings it, you have to defend against it. And so I, I agree you don't do it, but what I want to make sure you understand is each, each one of those counts carries a maximum of one year in jail, so a total of three years in jail, and $6,500 in fines on each count. So as long as you're aware of the maximum penalties, that you have a right to counsel, you can want to continue to waive your right to have court-appointed counsel. Well, who, where is the injured party to where I'm going to be able to ask questions. Well, well, we'll set a trial date. And who's that injured party? Because that's who is supposed to the show up today. Oregon. It has to be a human person. No. The injured it party does. And you have one right here, the representative of the state of Oregon. It has to and be. And they'll it. have witnesses. Uh, well, see, I object to that. Well, you can object all you like. We do that at a trial. And so you have a right to do discovery. If you go to the DA's office, they'll provide you with their discovery. You'll have to pay for the production cost of it. So are you, um, do you have oaths and bonds to the Constitution? Do you uphold that? Do you have an oath that I'm able to see? You can look at the oath that every judge in Oregon takes. Okay, so you have an oath. So I need a trial by jury of my peers. Right. Of my peers. Okay, and, and you proceed see. forward in common law. Well, here's how it works. We set a trial date. This is a misdemeanor case, so it's a six-person jury. We bring in a panel of potential jurors. You get to ask questions of them, as does the state. And then we select a panel of six. And there are some rules on that. And if you look at the rules of procedure, you can determine that. And there are statutes involving them, so you, but you get to participate. But the statutes and codes don't apply to the people. They do. No, common law does. Statutes and codes are so repugnant you, to the Constitution. If you want to argue to the Court of Appeals that this court doesn't have jurisdiction, I'm fine to do that, but it will be after the trial. And so we, we're going to proceed with the trial. You can argue that something doesn't apply or does apply. Mm -hmm. that you're entitled to argue legal arguments or factual arguments, but we will proceed in the procedure that is set forth in the statute and is the practice in the state of Oregon. Which is under the common law? The constitutional courts? Is that how you're pursuing? Well, this is a constitutional court pursuant to the Constitution of the State of Oregon. So that's by what authority you're acting is under the common law? That's right. The Seventh Amendment? We follow the common law. Well, see, this is a separate constitutional court from a federal court. We are sometimes subordinate and have to follow certain restrictions in the federal constitution, but Oregon has its own constitution and its own authority to enact courts, and they have. I understand that. So, but the Constitution trumps all state law and no, all state it constitution. It does not. Okay. So I have separate uh, authority and they're co and it depends. So I have my own authority. Okay. Where do you get that state, authority? The state the constitution of the state of Oregon. Okay. And that's how we're gonna proceed under the so, law. 
Okay. You don't have to like it. So the state of Oregon supersedes the Constitution for the United States of America. Is that correct? No, see, we don't have arguments. I'm telling you how it's going to work. No, I'm asking. That's not an argument. No, but see, I don't give legal advice. If you want to offer legal advice about a challenge on the Constitution, that's what a lawyer assists you to do. I answer questions presented in a proper legal form. You can present a motion, if you'd like, challenging the jurisdiction of the court or the jurisdiction of the district attorney to make a charge against you or the procedure. But I'm not going to debate with you whether you think it's right or I think it's right. I'm telling you what the procedure of this court is, and if you think that procedure is improperly applied, that's what you appeal to the Court of Appeals, or you argue it to me in a motion. Well, I do demand that the prosecutor produce the injured party, a natural human being that can't be the state, and I demand dismissal for lack of injured party. Well, your motion for dismissal is denied. We're not at that stage. For the record. I understand. So, do you want to just set a trial date today? Uh, Your Honor, I don't know whether or not the court would perhaps like to have one additional um, status to allow the defendant to actually have gotten and... Well, I would set another status in, in between the trial date. So, I want to make sure you're clear. You do not want me to appoint a counsel to assist you. No. Okay. And you have made you aware of your right to have counsel. You have a right to have someone assist you who's a member of the bar. Uh, but you have a right to represent yourself and you're choosing to represent yourself. Yes, because the bar is just an association. They license themselves. They're not licensed by the state of Oregon. Uh, it, it doesn't make a difference to me. You don't have to. You can have anyone who's a member of the bar represent you. If you can't afford one, I will appoint someone who's a, approved by the court. And as soon so as I you. accept that, then I'm proving and say, stating that I'm not competent to speak for myself, and I am a competent individual. No, that, that's not what it is. So. You, you have the right at all times to speak for yourself and make decisions about your trial. An attorney assists you with the process and the procedures. Through but statutes the and day, codes. You get to decide whether or not you're going, what you're going to do at trial. Do you have a common law attorney available? See, when you say common law attorney, that has a specific meaning. Mm-hmm. We have a mixture of both statutory and common law in the state of Oregon. And so I have attorneys who are on my register who are approved by the court to receive appointments who will give you advice. Whether you take their advice or not is up to you. The attorney doesn't make the decisions in your case. You make the decisions. So have you seen the filed habeas corpus and default judgment that filed by the United, the Unified United States Common Law Grand Jury? They stamped received to Judge Ann Aiken. And a writ of error is coming as well. That's fine. Have you seen those? But Judge Ann Aiken is not a member of this court. She's a member of the federal court. Yeah, but she brings that down to the inferior court. I do not answer the federal court. Okay. Separate court. Yeah. So. But they supersede all inferior courts. They do not. Okay. So, do you, the real question is, do you want an attorney to assist you and give you advice? If you do not, that is your choice. I can't force you to have an attorney, nor would I. I'm recommending that you do because you're facing up to three years in jail. So if I don't get an attorney, are you saying the charges are going to be worse because I'm not no. going along with that? The charges are the same. The sentencing is the same. Mm-hmm. But you don't have the benefit of having someone experienced in the court system give you advice about how it works and how to proceed. That's all. So I, the way I sentence you doesn't change whether you have, if you're sentenced or if you win... So isn't it the tribunal, the jury, that sentences me? The, no, the jury decides facts. I decide the law, and I pass sentence. So if the jury defines you guilty, then I impose a sentence. If they find you not guilty, then you're free. Hmm. So the jury in this system does not impose the sentence. So it's my understanding the Constitution says that the jury comes up with the verdict, and it's an untainted it jury where no questions are asked as to what party they're a part of or any of those types of things. They're selected, the and they would make that sentencing. decision. The verdict is a decision of guilty or not guilty. Okay, so the, what does the jury do? They decide guilty or not guilty. And then you decide on what to do from there? If you are found guilty, then I have sentencing. And I've told you the maximum penalty that you may face is one year in jail and a six thousand two hundred fifty dollar fine on each count. Okay. The minimum is I think a hundred dollar fine on each count. 
and what varies that? I mean, how do you make that decision on here's a minimal to a maximum? Well, I haven't heard any facts yet, so it depends on each case. I have the discretion to make those determinations based on what I hear in a case. So you solely get to decide? That's correct. And you were given that authority by the state of Oregon? That's correct. Okay. Well, by the people of Oregon who enacted a constitution. Not the people. The people wouldn't say that. The people would say the trial would be the well, jury. See, here's, again, why you might want the benefit of a legal advisor to talk to you about what the law in Oregon is and the procedures followed by this court. <clears throat> you don't have to have one. If you want one, I'll appoint someone to assist you. Otherwise, I'm telling you, you have that right. You're if you don't want it, that's fine. I'll let you proceed without an attorney. But you then are required to follow the court rules and follow the uh, rules of evidence uh, and discovery so that you can have a trial. And my job is to make sure you have a fair trial. And we have a rule set out for that. <clears throat> the procedure in this is, if you represent yourself, you'll need to go to the district attorney. They are required to provide you all the evidence that they are going to present against you. They'll give you a packet of documents and identify their witnesses. You can do your own investigation. And then we have a trial. And they'll put on their case and you get <coughs> mount a defense if you want. But you have a right to remain silent. You don't have to say anything. They cannot compel you to testify against yourself. Mm -hmm. And I you want to have a legal advisor to give you advice and assist you with your case and present your trial, I'm happy to point that. But if you don't, then let's set a trial date and move forward. How do you want to proceed? And we can set a trial date. So you do not want an attorney appointed to you? Not a bar attorney, no. Okay. Uh, how far out are we looking? How many days of trial are we talking about? A day? How many witnesses? Well, we might want to set it for two days. I, I think that that I think that that might be wise. So right. November fourteenth and fifteenth. Yes. I can have just one moment. Um, it looks like uh, Mr. Murphy is um, at a training on the fifteenth. Mr. Murphy's available the 9th and 10th. With the 9th and 10th work, okay. So we'll set trial for a jury trial on November 9th and 10th. I'd like to set a status conference for 30 days from now. moment it's all been um, requested um, and so we expect that that won't be a lengthy process okay and so how soon can this again my my note indicates that we have um, emailed with the deputy to attempt to expedite getting reports okay soon. so the process was written there's a copy for you or whatever it is I don't know how much it is not much and pick up the files uh, so it sounds like they haven't gotten the full police reports yet so I would give them a, another week, maybe two weeks, and then go there, and they'll give you all the documents that they have. And then when you look at them, if you have questions about, you think there should be something more, or something that's not yet been received, we'll talk about that at the status conference. So you want to do a status trial September 23rd, and then you want to do a pre-trial before the trial date as well? Right. We have, we're going to set that on the 23rd. And it's just a status conference. It's not a trial. We're going to, just like today, we're going to talk about what the status of the case is, where you are in discovery, and what you've gotten, and then finalize.
otherwise we'll firm up our blends as well. So there, when you stated that they were felony charges, he said misdemeanors. Where is the miscommunication on that? And I haven't heard of any plea bargains or anything that well, have been put on the table. Or I don't participate in any plea, and I do show them as misdemeanors. I think I probably read the morning file wrong. But no, it's charged as misdemeanors. That's a huge difference. Yeah, I have the information as three A misdemeanors. Okay. So then we'll be back September 23rd at 9 o'clock in the morning. Anything else we need to do today? Mm, not that I know of. Okay. Well, and I would say, Mr. if you change your mind and decide you do want court appointed counsel, you can tell me that, and I'm happy to appoint someone to assist you, give advice, you can ask questions to. Uh, but... Again, you have the full right to represent yourself at trial, and every citizen does. And that's what you want to do, but I, I do recommend that you consider talking to, at least talking to a legal advisor, whether you decide to try the case on your own. Uh, they can give you advice about how this court works and, and what the procedures are for trial. Totally up to you, but... Like I'm I able say, to contact you and request that. Well, you can, yeah, I mean, you have to send notify the DA, but if you decide you want an attorney... Notify my office, and we will uh, uh, get you a court appointed counsel. Okay, and then from there, is that where plea bargains and stuff come in, or plea bargains? Well, you can talk to the you can talk to the DA and ask what their offer is, and, and negotiate with them. But yes, the attorney could assist you in negotiating, work up negotiations with them, be your intermediary. I mean, there are a lot of roles that the attorney can play that are all pre-trial. Mm -hmm. I've certainly had people uh, who have had their attorney just sit there and they run their trial and they get to ask advice to their attorney when they want it. So there are a lot of ways you can do it, but for you know pretty minimal cost to you, the court appointed counsel can provide you a fair amount of advice. So it, it's totally up to you. I do encourage you to consider it because they're serious charges and, and trials are not easy even for seasoned lawyers who've tried a lot of cases. So if you don't have experience doing it, they're difficult things, and there are a lot of issues. You know, part of my job is to make sure it's neutral, and, but I can't act as your lawyer during the trial or the process. I, I'm to be a neutral. And so that's why I'm encouraging you strongly to at least talk to somebody. And I'm happy to appoint someone for you to talk to. But if you don't want to, that's, I'm not going to twist your arm, but I do think it's important, and there are seasoned people who know how our court system works. We'll pray about it. Okay. Fair enough. That's the best I can ask. Then I'll see you on September 23rd. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Yes. Yeah, so we'll give you a, just a moment. I won't get you an acknowledgement for the dates. Okay. And Sam, who just walked in, who are you? Um, they told me I was uh, just waiting for a friend. I don't know when. What's your name? Oh, my name? Uh, I guess. Can I excuse you? Yes, thank you, Mr. Theobald. Yeah. I'm just a, like a, a friend who's like waiting for somebody to... Who is your friend? Uh, city, so he wasn't brought down. Oh, okay, so when... I'm, I'm not sure when I can... Uh, I think you need to call his attorney, Sarah Williams, uh -huh, so uh, because they're having a meeting today, and so I don't... We didn't set it. Okay, because I'm still online, yeah. Yeah, we set a date in two weeks. Garvin, didn't we set it in two weeks? I'll go check really quick. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right, so yeah, she'll come and let you know when it's next to the Have a good day. All right, thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that last part on because they left it on my recording um, for that person. And um, at this time, I was about nine days away from having our son Elijah um, Jill, um, showed up for that and now um, waiting to see what comes next so wanted to get this recording out of um, how the hearing went and I will post more later thank you